We will make America the best place in the world to start a business. We'll hire workers and we'll open factories and we'll get rid of these horrible regulations that make it impossible to do business in this country. Donald Trump on the stump in Pennsylvania a few weeks ago highlighting his economic plan. Apparently Hillary Clinton was also listening in because she was quick to respond to Mr. Trump's proposals. So we can't let him roll the dice with our children's futures. We need to write a new chapter in the American dream, and it sure cannot be chapter 11. Oh, isn't that a clever poll-tested line? So Hillary's using poll-tested rejoinders. We haven't heard a whole lot about her economic plans. So the question for the campaign and for the first Tuesday following the first Monday in November is this. Which of those two candidates will be better for our economy. Let's discuss it now by welcoming in financial expert John DeBacco. He's the managing director of Your Money, uh, pardon me, Your Vote, YourMoney.com, which is a platform for Americans to weigh in on all the economic issues coming up this election year. John, we really appreciate your time tonight here on Newsmax Prime. Good evening, J.D. Thanks for having me, brother. Great to be with you. You bet, Johnny T. Let me just put it to you straight, right off the bat. Who has the better economic plan and why? J.D., this is an easy one. Let's put it straight. Donald Trump is the guy to make our economy great again. There's no doubt about it. The why is very simple. I'll take one of the most world-renowned negotiators to go out there and fight for America every day of the week. Donald Trump's been out there across the globe negotiating with world leaders. He's been negotiating with government bureaucracies. He's been dealing with taxes. He's been dealing with regulation. He's put forward a very simple plan with his great economic team and Steve Moore and of course Larry Kudlow. Cut taxes, lower the burden on small businesses, lower regulation on Wall Street. Regulation is killing us, J.D. Companies can't grow because they're burdened every day with more and more compliance, more and more SEC, more and more regulations. You got no time and you got no resources to grow when you got to deal with regulation. And then on trade, you know what? I want a guy who sets the bar high. Do I want a trade war? No. I'm like you. I'm a free market capitalist. I'm all for the free markets. I bow at the altar of free markets. But the bottom line is this. We'll start at trade war, and then we'll negotiate our way down from there. If people don't want to take America seriously, Donald Trump's going to fight them. And we need somebody for once who's going to fight for us instead of going around the world and bowing down to dictators. And speaking of going around the world, of course, Secretary Clinton, during her days at the State Department, talked about all the flying she was doing. And she's been very interesting, kind of flying around the edges of the economic plans, perhaps, John, because so many people say, in essence, she's trying to become, in effect, the third term of Barack Obama. Now, things have not been good when you take a look at growth or the lack thereof. But let's take a listen to Mrs. Clinton. Perhaps it offers us a glimpse of what she's proposing. I believe we can compete and win in the global economy. To do that, we should renegotiate trade deals that aren't working for Americans and reject any agreements like the Trans-Pacific Partnership that don't meet my high bar for raising wages or creating good-paying jobs. Oh, her high bar. Hey, John, I thought when she was Secretary of State, she was all in for TPP. Yeah, well, J.D., the only economic plan Hillary Clinton's been working on is with her and Bill in their, in their Ponzi Rico scheme, the Clinton Foundation. She's flying around the world, taking money from people, taking money from the highest bidder, lying in their pockets. If you remember 10, 12 years ago, she left the White House broke. All of a sudden, $150 million later, the State Department is for sale, and Bill Clinton's flying around with world leaders who rape women, who throw homosexuals off buildings and they burn Christians at the stake at a hundred million dollars. That's greed and power. That's the only economic plan she's got. And when she says renegotiate, J.D., my father told me a long time ago, you don't negotiate a bit against yourself. When she was in the Senate, she made some of these policies. When she was the First Lady, her husband made some of these policies. When she was at the State Department, she made some of these trade deals. 
Now she wants to renegotiate the deals that she made. That's not a deal maker. That's a loser, J.D. You know, we take a look at the political history of the Clintons, and one of the reasons I got elected to Congress in 1994 is because when Hillary was first lady and her spouse was the president, they were able to get through by one vote, by one vote, the largest tax increase in American history. Do you worry that a second President Clinton would take another bite at the high tax apple? We're talking about a double down on a double down, J.D., a second President Clinton and a third term of Barack Obama. Barack Obama is a global socialist. We all know this. He's done nothing for this economy. He's done nothing for the African Americans in the inner city. He's done nothing for America except make us weak and leave from behind. And we need somebody, anybody, and Donald Trump just not anybody. He's the best we got right now, says 10 million Republicans. And he's the guy to make America great again and make the world great again. Because what's happening here in America is even worse around the globe. We need to lead from the front, and we need to dispose of the Clintons and the Barack Obamas and start fresh. And as you know, Mr. Trump is not hesitant when it comes to criticizing Mrs. Clinton. In fact, while he was on the stump, he went ahead and slammed her for some of the economic choices she has already made that he says have ultimately harmed American workers. Let's listen to Mr. Trump now. Hillary Clinton unleashed a trade war against the American worker when she supported one terrible deal after another. From NAFTA to China to South Korea, it doesn't matter. No matter where she went, the American worker was hurt. And you will be hurt worse than ever before if she becomes president. Now, John, there's something else we touched on briefly, but we probably need to amplify and that is the hidden costs of regulation. Because as we have seen, uh, the executive branch with its uh, alphabet soup of uh, acronyms for all these executive agencies have bureaucrats churning out regulations that ultimately cost businesses billions of dollars. Would Mrs. Clinton do anything to stop runaway regulation? J.D., you've been in government. I've been around business in Washington for a long time. The thing that these Democrats want most is patronage jobs. The more they can pad the patronage jobs, the better they are. They got the unions. Hillary Clinton's out there talking about one day putting the coal miners out of business, and then the next day saying she wants to help the coal miners. Regulation is killing America. When I go around Wall Street and I talk to Wall Street firms, they're saying, I can't take it anymore. They want to lay people off because they can't afford the cost. More attorneys, more compliance, more meetings with the regulators, FINRA, SEC. I'm just giving you my take, but everywhere you turn, we got the environment, we got Wall Street, we got building, we got energy. All they want to do is bad the government jobs to regulate the businesses. They want to put small businesses out of business. And 90% of American jobs are created by small businesses. One extra regulator probably takes away two jobs because you got to pay these lawyers these days $1,000 an hour, J.D. And uh, we thank you for your time for free, Johnny T. Got about 45 seconds. Want to ask you something. I guess it was Billy Joel who sang about a New York state of mind. We hear the New York in your voice. We know Mr. Trump is a New Yorker, but he gets things done. What impresses you most about the Donald Trump you know? What impresses me most about Trump is that what he says, he does. And so far what I've seen on a host of issues, if he believes in some and he goes with it, he doesn't back down, he doesn't double back, he doesn't take things back, he doesn't apologize. Maybe once in a while if he makes a mistake, he fixes it, but the guy's a doer. And JD, when you talk about that New York state of mind, Staten Island, New York, with 90% vote for Donald Trump in the primary, number one county in America. And that is worth noting, and we will see if that translates into bipartisan support. We heard in the 80s about the Reagan Democrats. Perhaps this year we'll see Donald's Democrats on that first Tuesday following the first Monday in November. John Tobacco, we thank you very much for your insights and analysis on our economy and the upcoming election this evening on Newsmax Prime. And that wraps up what has been a very busy news week. 
We look forward to seeing you back here Monday. Have a great weekend. Stay brave, stay free, stay tuned.